Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to look today at ratios. You can expect to see a little bit about writing ratios, and then from writing to a ratio, like from a word problem into a ratio, and then we're going to talk about equivalent ratios and writing things as a unit rate as part of our equivalent ratio section. So first off, writing ratios. There are three main ways to write a ratio. The first one's listed there, word form. To write it in word form, you're writing the word two in between the numbers. So this is a ratio of five to six. That's also the way that we read ratios. So even if it's in one of the other forms, we would say it's a ratio of five to six. Here's um, the other, another way we might write it in, in colon form where we would write it 5 colon 6, but again we would read that as 5 to 6, a ratio of 5 to 6, 5 parts water, 2 parts lemonade, or 6 parts lemonade, or whatever it is. Okay, so that's a ratio of 5 to 6, and the other way that we would write this, please don't freak out, it is in a fraction form written as 5 over 6, we would also read this as a ratio of 5 to 6. The first number goes in the numerator, the second number goes in the denominator. So, I'd like you to practice with this ratio of 3 to 4. Go ahead and pause the recording, write that ratio in the two other forms. Hi, welcome back. Hopefully you did actually pause it and you wrote it out like this, 3 colon 4 and 3 over 4. Again, all of these are three are ways to write the same ratio, 3 to 4, 3 to 4, 3 over 4, um, three ways to write the same ratio. Let's talk for a brief minute about what a ratio is. A ratio is a comparison. If you have two dogs and three cats, you would compare them using a ratio. And that ratio would be, you have a ratio, um, a two to three ratio of dogs to cats. So two dogs, three cats, you have two dogs for every three cats. That's how you write a ratio. Again, remember, we can write them as in colon form or fraction form, but that's what a ratio is. So when we get a word problem and it says you have two dogs and three cats, write it as a ratio, you could write it as two to three, two colon three, or two over three. That's your ratio of dogs to cats. So let's do a quick um, sample word problem. The parking lot has five cars for every two trucks. Write this as a ratio. So it's a ratio of five cars to two trucks. It's written cars first, trucks second. So we would write it like this, a five to two ratio. Five to two, five colon two, or five over two. The first number goes first, the second number goes second. All right, unless it said, the parking lot has five cars and two trucks, write this as a ratio of trucks to cars, then it would be switching things. But for the most case, unless it's a trick question, um, it's just going to write it in the order that it appears in the word problem. So just be aware, the only time you'd switch the numbers is if it did say at the end, write a ratio of trucks to cars. Then you would write the number of trucks first and the number of cars second. All right, um, let's do one more. Uh, my class has five girls and seven boys. What is the ratio of girls to total number of students? This is the other type of question that you get with ratios quite often. And the biggest mistake is for people to do this. Girls to boys, five to seven. And while that is a correct ratio of girls to boys, it's not what the question's asking us for. We're not looking for a ratio of girls to boys. We are looking for a ratio of girls to total number of students. And that adds one step in our problem solving. So we know the number of girls is five, but what we don't know is the total number of students. So we have to do a little bit of math to figure out that there are five girls and seven boys, five plus seven is 12, so there are 12 total students. 
Then we can write the ratio of girls to total number of students very easily. Five girls, 12 total number of students. So again, look carefully for what the question's asking. Um, writing a ratio is not terribly challenging, but, but sometimes we miss step when we don't answer what the question's asking. So be very careful of that. Um, the, the final part of this lesson is talking about equivalent ratios. Now remember, you can write a ratio as a fraction, so this is basically another way of saying equivalent fractions. So if you've worked with equivalent fractions before, yay, it's nothing new. If you haven't worked with equivalent fractions before, I recommend that you watch the video on equivalent fractions where it spends quite a bit of time talking about equivalent fractions. I'll do a brief summary here. If I had the, the fraction of 7 over 4, or in other words, the ratio of 7, 7 to 14, 7 over 14, apologize, I said 7 over 4, um, I would need to reduce this fraction into an equivalent form. To do that, I would divide both the top and bottom of the fraction by the same number. Now, why did I pick the number 7? 7 is the greatest common factor of both 7 and 14. So again, if this is a review for you, you can kind of skip through this section. But to find the greatest common factor, what you do is list all of the factors of the numerator. So the factors of 7 are 1 times 7. And the factors of 14 are 1, 2, 7, and 14. Those are the numbers that multiply together to give you 14. 1 times 14, 2 times 7. The largest number that is in both of those lists is 7. That means that 7 is our greatest common factor. So you divide the top, top divided by 7, and the bottom divided by 7, and you get your equivalent ratio or your equivalent fraction. So 7 over 14 is equal to 1 half. In other words, if you have a ratio of 7 to 14, it's the same as having a ratio of 1 to 2. All right. Another way that you can make equivalent ratios is actually when you multiply. You can multiply the top and bottom of, of a fraction times any number as long as it's the same number on the top and bottom and you'll get an equivalent ratio. So 2 to 3 is equivalent to 6 to 9. Again, the number 3 doesn't matter. You can multiply it times any number as long as it's the same on the top and bottom and it will be an equivalent ratio or in other words equivalent fraction. One special type of equivalent ratio is called a unit rate. A unit rate is a ratio that has the denominator of 1. That's it. So here's an example, here's an example, and here's an example. Um, 5 over 1, 9 over 1, 13 over 1. All of them have a denominator of 1. That's what makes it a unit rate. When we read it, we would say something per something. For example, miles per hour. So you can see these three ratios would be read as 5 miles per hour, 9 miles per hour, 13 miles per hour. And what it's saying is it's 13 miles per one hour or 9 miles per one hour. We can use other words other than miles per hour. It could be rotations per minute. Um, we often use this to make comparisons. So it's it's your amount, your original amount, per one unit. That's why it's called the unit rate, so per one mile. Um, although we don't say it's 25 miles per one hour, that's why we just say per hour. And that's just an example. So if you're ever asked to make a unit rate, all it's asking you to do is make the denominator have 1. Here's an example of a question um, just showing you how to do that. Write this ratio as a unit rate. So 15 to 3 as a unit rate. I would start out by writing it as a fraction and then converting it into having a denominator of 1. The way you make the denominator 1 is you take the denominator divided by the denominator. 
So whatever the denominator is, you're going to divide by that. And that's going to make your denominator equal to 1. To keep it an equivalent ratio, you have to do the top divided by that same number. In this case, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So our new unit rate is 5 over 1. So if you add 15 to 3, it's equivalent to 5 to 1, or 5 per 1. All right? That is ratios. We talked about writing ratios in three different forms. We talked about looking at some word problems with ratios and equivalent ratios, including a unit rate. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.